I bought one of the highest reviewed soundbars with an included subwoofer on Amazon for around $100. This is the Fino P27. This soundbar has almost 7,000 reviews on Amazon with many, many people raving about it. But is it actually any good? Well, let's check it out. What's up guys, Jonah Mathis here. Now typically, I'm looking at much higher end soundbar systems, ranging from around $400 to over $3,000. Of course, I know that not everybody has or is willing to pay between $500 to $1,000 for a higher end soundbar system. This is my first time reviewing a soundbar in this $100 to $200 price range, and I was really curious as to how it would actually perform. But before we get into that, I wanna thank Luster for sponsoring this video. If you're like me, you probably spend hours reading endless reviews before deciding what to buy. Well, Luster is a free browser extension that does all the extensive product research for you, so you can find the best product for your money effortlessly. Lustra instantly tells me what the best product is for every price range, and I know I can trust the recommendations because it shows summaries of the reviews from the sources that I already trust, like Wirecutter, Reddit, YouTube, and niche blogs. It also lets me compare prices and shows me if a product is on sale. I actually really enjoy using Lustra, and I think you will too. You can learn more about Lustra by clicking the link in the description. It's free, and it's also a great way to directly support my channel. Thank you. Again, this soundbar system is called the Fino P27. It's a two-channel soundbar with a wired subwoofer, making it a 2.1 channel system. In the box, it comes with the soundbar and subwoofer, and a smaller box containing some documentation, an HDMI cable, digital optical cable, an RCA to 3.5 millimeter auxiliary cable, some mounting hardware, and the remote control. The soundbar is almost 34 inches long, three inches tall and three inches deep. So it's not a very large soundbar at all and is also fairly light. It's made out of plastic, has a thin curved metal grill covering the front and top. The soundbar has two speaker drivers built into it, one for the left channel of audio and one for the right channel of audio. This is pretty darn surprising considering how it sounds. The subwoofer enclosure is four and a half inches wide, 16 and a half inches tall, and almost 10 inches deep. It uses a five and a quarter inch driver covered in black cloth and has a glossy front port. The subwoofer was also fairly impressive to my surprise. The soundbar has two mounting brackets on the back, so you can easily mount it to the wall or to the bottom of your TV with an additional mounting bracket. The back of the soundbar is where you'll find the power cable and all of its available connections. Unfortunately, the power cable is attached to the soundbar with no way to remove it, which is kind of annoying. As far as the connections go, there's an HDMI ARC port, digital optical in, auxiliary in, and a subwoofer out port. The subwoofer out port provides both power and audio signal to the included subwoofer. And on the side, there's a power, volume up, and volume down button, as well as a USB port for playing local audio files. You can also use Bluetooth to wirelessly play audio to it as well. Now, setting the system up should literally take less than five minutes. Super easy to do. Connect the soundbar to power, connect it to your TV via HDMI arc, digital optical, or even auxiliary if you'd like, this is only a 2.1 channel system, so it really doesn't matter what you use. Then connect the subwoofer to the SW out port on the back of the soundbar. The subwoofer should ideally be placed in the front right of the room because the port is on the front and the subwoofer is firing off to the right side of the room. This will provide the best low end performance possible with this system. It also comes with a simple remote control in which you can adjust the volume level, change the input, adjust treble and bass, and set it to various sound modes. You may have to adjust the audio output setting on your TV as well, but it should automatically recognize it and begin working. Now in terms of sound quality, I really wasn't expecting much for this small little soundbar and subwoofer at a very budget price tag of only $100, but I was actually really impressed. I compared this soundbar a bit to my Gen 1 Sonos Beam because they are fairly similar in size, but the Sonos Beam is much more expensive at around $400. In the small studio space that's 11 feet by 10 feet, it performed very well miles better than my LG C10's built-in speakers with a lot more low-end audio. I performed my usual testing with movies like Avengers Infinity War and others from my Plex Media server and a lot of movies and TV shows from Netflix. I'm fairly positive that people interested in a budget soundbar like this one are likely only streaming content from Netflix, Hulu, and other streaming services, so that's where I did most of my testing. The overall sound is very commendable. The low end is very evident from the subwoofer, the mid-range is pretty clear, and the same with the higher frequencies as well. 
It very easily fills up the entire space with audio and doesn't sound half bad. The subwoofer does a very good job of expanding and adding some depth to this system. The only time I ran into some slight or heavy audio distortion was at higher volume levels. The higher frequencies would get somewhat tinny or bright and the subwoofer would get muddy or muffled where the audio was just no longer clear at all. But the mid range seemed pretty consistent and solid throughout all of my testing. However, the dialogue wasn't always easy to hear. This is definitely due to the lack of a center channel. The main differences I noticed between the Pheno P27 and the Sonos Beam were the clearness of the dialogue and the low end. When switching to the Sonos Beam, it feels like the low end essentially disappeared altogether. While it may seem obvious because the Sonos Beam wasn't using a subwoofer, it was still surprising how drastic the difference was. But the Sonos Beam's overall audio was much more clean sounding and the dialogue was much more intelligible. Again, this is not to say that the Pheno P27 sounds horrible, it's just not nearly as good in every aspect as a Sonos Beam, except for the low end frequencies. I played around with the different sound modes quite a bit and found that the music mode was the most balanced and best for watching movies and listening to music. Movie mode bumped up the low end way too much and caused a fair bit of distortion from the subwoofer. The news mode basically cut out the subwoofer altogether and the 3D mode tried to process the audio way too much and just sounded bad. So leaving it on music mode seemed to be the best solution for me. But what really kind of blew my mind was when I tested this soundbar in my living room. I've talked about the shape and size of our living room many times in the past, and realistically, I never thought it would do a good job in that space. But to my surprise, once again, it performed very well. Even Ashley was impressed with how much it filled the space compared to many other systems that we've tested there before. It doesn't sound amazing or really even great by any means, but I think it gets the job done and fills the space enough for us to still enjoy it. While I may be very accustomed to higher end systems, there were quite a few things I really did like about this system. One, the price. $100 for this system is a heck of a deal. Putting this in a small bedroom or anything like that is a no brainer if you have a smaller budget. Two, sound quality for the price. This kind of goes along with the first point, but for $100, this system sounds really good. I don't know if you'll be able to find many systems at this low of a price that perform this well. Three, easy and straightforward setup process. Simplicity is really nice. A lot of people buying a cheaper system like this probably aren't super experienced with audio setups. Making the setup process super simple makes life easier for the consumer. I appreciated the sound quality for the price of this system, but I think it has a few shortcomings. One, the build quality. The soundbar isn't half bad. The glossy finish is kind of annoying at times because it's a fingerprint magnet, but I'd much prefer that over having cloth everywhere on the soundbar. But the subwoofer's quality is lacking. The paint has already chipped off on some of the edges and the cloth feels like it will tear with the slightest bit of pressure to it. Two, lack of a center channel. I know it's only $100, but I think if they could have fit a center channel in here for just a little bit more money, it would make a world of difference. Not having a center channel really hurts how clear the dialogue could be. Three, the different sound modes. I think the different sound modes could be a bit less drastic. They're so drastic that the only one I really wanted to use was music mode. All the others just sounded basically terrible in my opinion. But that's really it. Overall for $100, I think this is a great budget option for anyone looking to improve the sound quality of their TV. I would definitely recommend this for smaller rooms and smaller TVs because it will look and sound much better. If you use it in a massive room, it may not make much of a difference. And it paired with a larger TV just looks very out of place. And remember, I've done tons of reviews and comparisons on other soundbar systems. So if that's something that you're interested in, definitely subscribe to my channel and check out my soundbar reviews playlist. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.